Hello and hi everyone. So today we'll look at a new chapter, chapter 12, heat conduction and thermal expansion. So first we are going to look at what is heat conduction. So when you have two objects with different temperature are placed in thermal contact. So you have two objects, different temperature, they are in contact with each other. The temperature of the warmer object decreases while the temperature of the cooler object increases. This is what is going to happen when you have two objects with different temperature are in contact. With time, they reach a common equilibrium temperature somewhere between their initial temperature. So let's say you have a warmer object of 80 degrees Celsius and another cooler object with a 40 degrees Celsius. When you, con you uh, make sure these two objects are in contact with each other, these two objects is going to reach an equilibrium temperature somewhere between that 80 degree to 40 degree. Okay, this is what we call as heat conduction where the energy is transferred from the warmer object with high temperature to a cooler object with a lower temperature. So, we are going to look at the definition of heat first. Heat is defined as the energy transferred from one object to another object because of the difference in the temperature. As there is difference in the temperature between two objects, the energy is going to be transferred. This is what we know as heat. Okay, so the SI unit for heat here is Joule, J and it is a scalar quantity. Okay, the rate of conduction depends on the properties of the substance. Okay, how fast does the energy is being transferred? It depends on the properties of the substance. What type of material it has been made of. So usually metal is a good conductor so they conduct heat very very quickly. Okay. So next, we are going to look at the conduction's equation. So let's say what you have here is you have a heat flow through a uniform cylinder as shown in the figure here. Where let us assume you have object T1 which is hotter and object T2 which is much cooler. So T1 is greater than T2. So the heat here is going to flow from the left to the right. So the heat is going to flow from T1 to the T2 across this cross-sectional area. So, the equation that is found from the experiment is such that the rate of heat flow is equals to negative, negative of Ka multiply with dt over dx. So, what is dq over dt here is the rate of heat flow. dq over dt is the rate of heat flow. And then, K is the thermal conductivity. So, K is the thermal conductivity, which is a constant. We'll look at this later. A is the cross-sectional area where your heat is going to flow. And dT over dx is known as temperature gradient. The rate of heat flow, which is also known as the rate of energy transfer, is a scalar quantity. So, your dQ over dT is a scalar quantity. And it has a unit of joule per second. So this is the unit or we have another unit known as a watt. Okay, because it is the rate of energy being transferred. Okay, this equation here can also be written as dq over dt is equal to negative ka multiplied by t2 minus t1 over x. Okay, so your T2 minus T1 is actually the dT just now. Your dT is equals to T2 minus T1 which is the change in the temperature or the difference in the temperature where T final minus T initial. And the negative sign in the equation here indicates that the heat flow is always in the decreasing temperature. So this negative sign is uh, indicating that when your heat is going to flow, it is going to flow such as from a higher temperature to a lower temperature. That is what they meant by always in the decreasing temperature direction. Okay, next we are going to look at the thermal conductivity, the term K in the equation. What does this term K here means? Thermal conductivity is defined as the rate of heat flow perpendicularly through the unit cross-sectional area of a solid 
per unit temperature gradient along the direction of the heat flow. Basically, this definition here is the rearrangement of the equation of our dq over dt. So, what you had earlier was dq over dt is equal to negative ka dt over dx. So, your dq over dt was negative ka dt over dx. So, what you do is you're going to rearrange dq over dt is divided by area multiplied with the dt over dx which is your negative k and then you bring your negative here it is equal to your k here okay so indirectly it is just the rearrangement of the equation so to understand the definition the check up rate of heat flow which is your dq over dt perpendicularly yes your k is directly it's directly proportional or perpendicular to your dq over dt through the unit cross-sectional area of a solid through this particular area per unit where you divide by dt over dx per unit temperature gradient dt over dx per unit okay so k is a proportionality constant that depends on the material so as i've mentioned earlier tadi k is a constant where the value of k it depends on the type of the material it depends on the material so if the material here the substance is a good conductor therefore it is going to have a larger thermal conductivity so kalau dia good conductor dia punya k nilai dia besar if it's an insulator good insulator it is going to have a low thermal conductivity for an example let's say we have k here for silver our substance is a silver the thermal conductivity for silver which is a constant 427 w m negative 1 c negative 1 this is the unit for our k so let's say you have wood which is a poor insulate uh, sorry which is a poor conductor which means it is a good insulator wood it cannot conduct heat that much so it is going to have thermal conductivity of 0 0.08 w m negative 1 degree per celsius so these are the thermal conductivity for various substance there are a few factors that is going to affect your rate of heat flow which is dq over dt there are a few factors the first factor here is the cross-sectional area where your dq over dt is equal to negative k a d t over d x so from this equation we can say that the d q over d t which is the rate of heat flow is directly proportional to the area if the area where the heat is going to flow is greater marker the rate at which the heat is going to flow is going to be greater juga so the first factor that affect the rate of heat flow is the cross-sectional area where they are directly proportional next factor here is the temperature gradient where dq over dt is also directly proportional to the temperature gradient here dt over dx all right the rate of uh, sorry the rate of heat flow through substance is proportional to the difference in the temperature between it ends so your dt here is the difference in the temperature as i've mentioned that the final temperature minus initial temperature difference in the temperature so your dq over dt dq over dt is directly proportional to the change in the temperature and the rate of heat flow also depends on the size and also shape of the object which is the length at which the object has to transfer the heat your l here according to this diagram here lah kan this is your sorry your x here kita guna symbol x the length of the substance where your heat is going to flow and then lastly we have the last factor here is the type of material okay the type of material it depends lah kan macam tadi dekat sini if the k is greater maka you are going to have dq over dt yang besar if the k is smaller you are going to have dq over dt yang kecil dekat sini all right okay another important thing here is when we are talking about the change in the temperature your 
dt which is t final minus t initial t final minus t initial your temperature here can be in any unit can be in degree celsius or kelvin as we are talking about change in the temperature only as we are talking about change in the temperature delta t the change in the temperature of 1 kelvin is equals to the change in the temperature of 1 degree celsius delta t of 1 k is equal to delta t of 1 degree celsius so it doesn't matter lah we are going to use which unit okay now we are going to look at how to do example one here you have a major source of heat loss from a house in cold climate is through the windows calculate the rate of heat flow rate of heat flow which means we are talking about dq over dt through a glass window of two meter multiply with one for 1 1.5 meter in area so which means your area here given as two 0 0.0 meter multiply with 1.5 meter and 3.5 millimeter thickness so the thickness here this x here is given as 3.2 millimeter if the temperature at the inner and outer surface are 15 degree and 14 degree respectively so this is our inner mirror with a 15 degree celsius and 14 is our outer surface the thermal conductivity of glass is given as 0 0.8 Wm negative 1 degree per Celsius. So the question asks to find dq over dt. And we have the equation of dq over dt is negative Ka dt over dx. Where k is given, so I'm just going to substitute whatever value given here, 0 0.8. Remember to keep the negative, do not do not eliminate the neg negative keep the negative area is 2 meter by 1.5 meter and then dt here is the change in the temperature where t final minus t initial so t final here is your object the heat is going to flow from hotter to cooler object from hot to cold Okay, so final here is 14 minus 15 degree Celsius divided by the thickness here which is 3.2 times 10 to the power negative 3. So I'm going to press my calculator here. You will end up with 750 watt or joules per second both is accepted however as you can see my answer does not have any negative here this is because my negative here in the equation has been cancelled by the negative from the delta t which i get negative one degree celsius okay negative one degree celsius due to 14 minus 15 you get negative 1 okay